I bit the apple cause I loved you And why would you lie? And then I realized you're just as naive as I am Oh, you're so traumatized, it makes me wanna cry You dumb bitch, I loved you, I loved you, I loved you, it's true I wanted to be you and do what you do Cursed games you should never play Part 5, The Man in the Fields Game this game will grant you physical and financial protection for the rest of your years. To play this game, you'll have to go into your backyard at 9 o'clock. Once you're there, you'll say the words, but who will scare the crows away? You'll whisper this seven times and you should hear a voice responding, that's not your biggest problem. This has officially started the game. Next, you'll go into your house. You'll find a room that has only one door. This will be your safe room. Once you leave this room, you'll notice that everything that can be opened in your house will be. Doors, cabinets, bags, containers, everything. Now you have until midnight. Your job is to close everything in your house. Throughout this game you'll see a shadowy man dressed in farmer's clothes. This is not the man in the fields, think of him as like a referee. But if you even look into the backyard, even accidentally, you'll see a scarecrow that was not there before. If you see him, he also sees you. Once he sees you, he'll start to walk towards you. You need to get to your safe room as soon as possible. But if you close everything by midnight, go to sleep until 6am. This will end the game and you will have won. This is the time I discovered a dark secret under the McDonald's ball pit. In 1995, me as a senior in high school got a summer job at McDonald's to save up for my dream car, a 95 Stang. For the most part, I cleaned the store, including the play place. This McDonald's was really weird though because from time to time, kids would go missing. The play place was pretty enclosed and we had no clue how this could have happened. The store was sued tons of times, but always won because there was no evidence by experts about it having any risks. The blame was usually put on the parents. I soon learned what the cause of the disappearances were. One day as I was cleaning tables, a scream erupted. A mother said her son had gone missing. A few kids said that they saw him fall into the ball pits and never came out. But as all the parents and employees were talking amongst themselves, their claims were dismissed as fellow guests comforted the mom. After we closed up shop for the night and the police had left, I had to finish cleaning the store alone. I was curious about what those kids were saying about the ball pit. Oddly enough, that's the one spot I was never taught how to clean it. And you'd think that a place like that would have to be cleaned. I sprayed my towel with Kleenex and leaned my whole arm inside. Man, no wonder these kids got in so deep. I could put my whole arm inside. I took my broomstick and shoved it in, and it went all the way in. I couldn't feel the bottom. I then decided to step in. Just then, I couldn't feel the floor. I decided to let the ball pit consume me, and I just kept sinking in. I'll show you what was on the other side next time. So I discovered something disturbing under the McDonald's ball pit. As I sunk in deeper, I eventually fell through to the other side. I found myself in a huge ball pit. It was dark. I climbed out and saw the rest of my surroundings. I realized I was in a basement under McDonald's. Everything felt so eerie, especially with the low hum emitting from the lights. Just then I saw a way out. I began going upstairs and heard a clap. I quietly ran up as fast as possible. Hmm? I heard in the far distance. I opened the door and shut it silently. Huh, I was in the back of the restaurant now. I couldn't question or process anything in the moment. All I did was darted for my car and got out of there. That night, I couldn't sleep. I really couldn't process anything. That morning, I drove back. Later on, our boss came in. Obviously, for me, he's suspect number one for this. I started a conversation with him and asked about what this door was. Oddly enough, he said that this was our basement storage room, which I guess is partially true, and I asked him if there's anything weird down there and he said no, just normal equipment. He never acknowledged the oddly placed ball pit there. That night, everyone left. That leader from earlier said bye to me, but then proceeded to stare at me for a good three seconds and didn't say anything. He then closed the door. After about an hour of cleaning, I headed for the ball pit. I stood in the same spot from before, but I didn't fall in. There was no hole. I began moving the balls until I could see that there was a floorboard placed there. In that moment, whoever was responsible for this knew that I knew. I called 911 and told them, I have reason to believe I know what happened to all those kids. I took my broom and I broke it on the board, and I fell in, this time being more observant. I noticed a small shoe near a door that I hadn't entered before. Tune in next time to see what happens. Goodnight. Who are you saying goodnight to? Him. Goodnight. Who? Him. Goodnight. Jagger, there's no one up there. Him up there. 
Show me. Look there. Look there. Jagger, there's no one up there. He's been talking to that vent and then he was blowing it kisses. And I'm creeped out now. Like, seriously, I'm not joking. I'm so creeped out right now. And just admit you were wrong. You know I care. I just couldn't bear so I wrote that song. Cause I can feel it too. I'm breaking down the walls for you. Baby, let me through. My bed is free tonight. Just come and hold me tight. You're all that I need. Just give me it, please. It started with a kiss. Hope it could be more than. My daughter has a disturbing and deadly talent, six words. So innocent, and yet, they had ruined everything. Daddy, look what I can do. I had turned, smiling, to see my daughter's newest magic trick. I stopped smiling when I saw it. My heart stopped, my blood ran cold a disturbing reminder of things past. I grabbed her by the shoulders, a little too hard. Made her promise to never tell another soul about what she could do. I made her swear so many times. She was crying by the end. Her face was ugly and contorted, her nose dripping snot. But she promised, I always knew that would not be the end of it. I knew what I had to do. Slip some sleeping pills into her drink, and cover her face with a pillow, like I had done with her mom. But I could not bring myself to do it. I loved her far too much, even more than I had loved my wife. And as she grew older, looking more like her mother every day, I knew it was only a matter of time. I still remember the night my wife told me the night of our fifth anniversary. She had bought my favorite scotch, cooked us both some thick steaks, and sat me down at the dining room table. Our baby son was sleeping soundly in his room. I have something important to tell you, she said, her tone sent chills trickling down my spine. I'm pregnant, she said flatly. My breath caught in my throat. I smiled. She did not. I don't understand, I said, breathlessly. Isn't this good news? My wife's lips pursed into a thin white line. It's a girl, she said. I can feel it. I waited for her to explain why she was upset, but instead, she started talking nonsense. The girls in my family. She trailed off. We all have a special, ability. I shook my head. Okay? I said, my mind a question mark. And what is that? My wife frowned. It's better if I show you. My daughter has a disturbing and deadly talent. She lifted the steak knife from beside her plate. Before I could stop her, she violently slashed open her wrist. I sent my chair clattering to the floor behind me as I lunged for my wife. I grabbed her arm so hard. But what I saw did not make any sense. Her arm was slashed down to the bone, but the blood did not flow out. It won't come out unless I let it, said my wife. It was then the blood began to flow. Down her arm, then up, into a shape. It detached and rose up, forming itself into a face, floating in mid-air. My wife's face. Then spiraling back down, like a funnel, into her open arm. The flesh knitted itself back together. That night, my dinner went untouched. What happened next was all my fault. But, in my defense, I felt my trust had been betrayed. I did not know where to turn. Weak and weary, I turned to the arms of another woman. Of course these things always come out. When I came home that day, my wife was sitting in one of the wooden dining room chairs. She had moved it to the middle of the living room, so that she was facing the door when I came in. Our baby daughter was snoring gently in her room. I could hear our son as he watched cartoons in his own. As I looked into my wife's eyes, I knew that she already knew. She stood up. My blood ran cold. Then I realized that it wasn't just a chill, my blood was actually getting colder. My wife walked slowly towards me. I can freeze you from the inside, she said. Burst all the blood vessels in your body. I can boil you alive. I can make you bleed from your eyes, your ears, and every pore. And next time, I will. My heart stopped, and I collapsed unconscious to the floor. By the time that I awoke, my wife had already found my lover, and done the last one she had threatened me with to her. After that we always fought, and my wife began to lose it. My mother died from a cerebral hemorrhage. 
My sister died from a stomach bleed. She never admitted it, but I knew that it was her. I had no choice, I had to kill her. And now, I wondered if I should have killed my daughter, too. My heart throbbed with guilt as I thought back to the first time she had shown me her magic trick, all those many years ago. I knew I could have stopped this all with a pillow and some pills, just as I had done with my wife. She said it was an accident. And maybe it was. But as I stared down at the body of my son, covered in blood that had exploded from every pore, I didn't really care.